All right, today we got one on Michael Wagner. In case any of y'all are wondering who Michael Wagner is, I've enlightened String. Tell us who he is. And Randy. This man has done a lot of great stuff for metal. Guaranteed um, somebody, anybody, everybody is going to know something on this guy. Yeah. That he's even, done. even as recent as Brian Chris <clears throat> was telling me that he saw him with Denman. Hmm. They were Denman was playing at a little club, and he said, "He's like, I didn't realize how old he was. I thought it was the Denman kid's dad, and it was just Michael Wagner, I guess, checking out their sound." <clears throat> but anyway, Michael Wagner was born April twenty fifth, nineteen fifty one. He's a producer, mixer, and engineer from Hamburg, Germany. Best known for his work with many top hard rock and heavy metal bands in the late eighties. He was particularly renowned for his innovative multi-amping and re-amping techniques which allow him to shape complex and highly recognizable guitar sounds. Wagner's works have sold over 94 million albums worldwide and that's what we're getting into. We're getting into some of some of the albums that we enjoyed that he had his hands on whether it was doing the full production or just mixing or engineering I, w I actually decided to go with, I didn't know what to pick. There's so much good stuff that I went That's with where he produced, mixed, and recorded the whole album. Most of matter just mastered. So, all right, my, my first one is, which I didn't even know he'd done this, Ozzy Osbourne's Osmosis. And, and there's some great stuff on this. Perry Mason, see you on the other side. Um, props to Billy Lambert, but um, I also didn't know that Zach didn't tour on this. Hmm. Did he not tour. <clears throat> played on this album. That's why. That Joe Holmes didn't play with them. That's why when we done the Ozzy thing and you had told me Zach played on this album, that's why I didn't think he did because I, I knew he didn't tour on it. But I didn't realize he actually did the studio stuff on it. But it was released October 23rd, 1995, and went platinum two times. Two times. So that day it came out with me, Billy, and Jerry went to Town and Campus Records. It was cold for an October night. That came out that day. Guar came out, Ragnarok, and Anthrax Stomp 422 came out that day. Yeah, that was, was that the, was that the first one with. Second. Second. Second one, Bush. <laughs> Which that was good, man. It was, I, I remember when that come out, Pantera was tearing the scene up, man. Man, they were, I mean, they were flying the flag hard for metal. Done? Oh, yeah. My go? Speaking of Town of Campus Records, hey, look, <coughs> the Town of Campus <laughs> Records sticker where I bought this at. <clears throat> Used for seven ninety nine many years ago. Anyway, this is. I don't know that these are any particular order for me, but they're all great albums, and they're, this is, it was hard to pick five, but I was trying to think of stuff that I didn't figure maybe they would pick, so I just kind of want to get some different shit. Um, this one might go, I don't know what they got, but anyway, Skid Row, self-titled, uh, came out in 88, uh, Michael produced, recorded, and mastered this album. And it went platinum nine times. Sold a couple albums. <laughs> yeah, just just a couple. Um, I don't need to go into all the details. Everybody knows this album, or they should. Or you, if you don't, you get, just turn it off and go away because you don't deserve it. No, just kidding. Anyway, um, great album. <coughs> I don't need to, to preach about that one, but it's, it's a great one. Decibel Geeks did a <clears throat> podcast on that album with Michael Wagner himself talking Ooh. about the recording. I think it's with, with might be Rachel Bolin and um, one of the other guys, but they talk about the artwork. I mean, talks about the whole album, track by track. So if you're interested in that album, I recommend get, go on to the podcast, Decibel Geeks, and listen to the podcast on the album. It's pretty awesome. I guess you can, <clears throat> I don't mess with the podcast all of it. I guess you can search within like a certain podcast group yeah well you go and like yeah. you can go to theirs and then like search maybe a certain name yeah once you subscribe if you go and search just type in decibel geeks and it'll give you their podcast and then you just hit subscribe and then it'll have a list of 
all the podcasts they have out. Mm-hmm. And then you can go through and it'll say like Michael Wagner's Skid Row self-title with, it's not Rachel Bolin, but it's one of the guitarists. That's, I can't even, Snake maybe, Dave Sabo. I don't know. It's one of the guitarists and Michael Wagner actually talking about the album. But it's really good. Well, it has to be Rob Fuso and Scott Scotty Hill. There's only other two guys that it could be. I don't remember. It's Scotty. must be Snake. <coughs> anyway, that what was my, what, good. my last <clears throat> one. Five. Ben. <clears throat> some people know him, some people don't. He produced it. Flotsam and Jetsam, No Place for Disgrace. It's on Lecter Records. Same Lecter label as Metallica. A little Metallica history. Jason Newstead played for this band before he went to play with them. This That's is the first minute. album without Jason. He yeah, only played on one album. Uh, what stands out alone on this one that I like, uh, I know who Elton John is. Oh, they do a speed metal version of Saturday Night's All yeah. Right for Fighting. Pretty kick ass. And version. that kicks you right in the bag. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty so good. It's really good. And, they have a new one out coming out sometime either this month. You see the video? It's good. I haven't seen the video, but it's I thought just, where they were putting one out. They got one coming out. They're still with us. They're just <clears throat> this type of music now is just so underground, which doesn't bother me any. That's this music's cool. for outcast anyway, so that's where I come in. So it's a good one. That was one of that was my second album to the band, but he produced this one. Major label release, Elector Records. I think it was, this was in. 88 maybe whatever 87 88 forget remember I bought it at Music Land April Rain saw me that, that. <laughs> love you Chris in, in a blue dress with butt cheeks sticking out I see look, that's the clean version look, butt cheeks Chris is shaking her head she can't believe it oh, <laughs> she was adorable wasn't she anyway number five Flotsam and Jetsam no place for disgrace yay alright <clears throat> so Going on number four. We're going to plug them again. Don't do it. It's <laughs> happening. Extreme Horror Graffiti. Released August 7th, 1990. Two times platinum. And there's more to this band than... Than I can't even think of the damn... More than words. Yeah. There's, they say you didn't have the words. Yeah, you lost. That's, that's what you it need was. more. He's you all need the more. Up, for God's I have sake. more than words. <clears throat> but even Jerry Lambert should really check this out. Me and Randy was tell, was telling Jerry that we thought this was a good album. But um, yeah, it's, man, it's it's good from beginning. It's decadence. They play shit out of that CD. Yeah, I mean it's Nuno. Very underrated guitarist. I mean, his guitar work smokes, and his backup vocals. That's what I'm saying. I think he has over Eddie Van Halen. Is he's got a good voice. Yeah. I mean, Eddie's Eddie's fine. I mean, I'm not going to take nothing away from Eddie. I'm not going to piss off Eddie fans because I like Eddie just as much as everybody else. But if you've never watched Nuno play guitar, you need to watch Fly of the Loop, Wounded Bumblebee. I let a dude at work watch it. He didn't. He didn't. He was. Unbe- he couldn't believe how good it sounded, how good he is on guitar. But um, there would be my next Michael Wagner CD, Extremes Porn Graffiti, coming in at number four. My number four pick is Megadeth. So far, so good. So what? Um, I love In My Darkest Hour. That's probably my favorite one on here. Yeah, it's good. That's kick ass. Um, Fucking mouth. PMRC. PMRC. Gotta love them. <laughs> um, let's see. They came out in 87, and Michael Wagner mastered this one, and that is all he did for this. But he mastered it pretty well, I'd say. And uh, this one went platinum at least one time. Um, so, Dave, this was a good lineup here. Not quite the perfect lineup yet. We're getting ready. They were, they were honing in. Yep, they hadn't dialed it in yet. They hadn't went to 11, but they were working on it. But anyway, number nine, number four, Megadeth, so far, so good. So what? Uh, next one, number four, the band that has never disappointed me and never will. Overkill, Under the Influence. It came out in the summer of 88. I remember I bought it that day at Record Corner. It was hot. It had these shorts on. 
bought it. Uh, what stands out from this record, uh, all their artwork over the years is kicked ass. Charlie, the mascot, the bat. I like the video. It's a cartoon where the mascot comes to life. Uh, here we are, 2019, new album coming out. I've heard the single, you know, uh, and it's just like a good friend of mine told me, when you lay your money down for this band as a live act or album physical form, you do not get disappointed. They have never let me down. I've never thrown cans across the floor <laughs> listening to them. I've never lost or heard my it temper. on their recordings. Never on their recordings. Never heard any pots and pans. Maybe they should have got Michael Wagner. Maybe they should have got it. Because it, he did a good job mixing, you know, Master Pop. Greg, so. you want to chime in? You know, <laughs> comment section. Down there, I buddy. saw this band on there. the uh, White Devil Armory tour. <clears throat> me working out, doing the martial arts like I do. This guy's a lot older than me. I'm like, how does he run around on stage? And I saw what he did. He'll, he'll squat down. And he'll catch his breath, and he jumps up. So, Bobby Blitz, if you've seen this, thank you. As we get older, we kind of slow down, but now I see how you do it. So, <laughs> I'm ripping you off. And uh, anybody who's pushing 60, they can run around the way you do and still have the pipes and shredded. They can do what you do. You've made a major influence on my life. He definitely and works out. He's he cut. works out. He's he cut cuts down. out, in, and I'm sure he could kick my ass. So... Coming in at number four, Overkill, Under the Influence, featuring the single Hello from the Gut. Hello! I love watching him when you go see him live, like he'll go off when the, the band's doing stuff without him, you know, he's not doing his vocal parts, so he goes off to the stage, off to the side, <clears> and he's like, you know, the part's coming up, it's like, where's he at, where's he at, and he comes flying off the stage, grabs the mic, and just... Hammers into it. Doesn't even miss a beat. The one thing I like about badass. them, and they did it before King Diamond did, they know that there's older fans out there, like me, and these guys, like <clears throat> the older shirts. And there's newer fans that turn on to it. So what do you do? We can make money off of it. Let's reprint some of our artwork on the shirt. When I went to the, this wasn't that one, was Electric Age Tour. You had a Feel the Fire and Taking Over shirt, which I still have. King Diamond had Fatal Portrait, Abigail and Them. And that's smart. Let's go ahead and repackage all the old stuff and get it out there again. But Overkill was the first one to do it, to my knowledge. You they know. got, um, <clears throat> Sorry. I don't know if y'all are Overkill fans, or even if you're just uh, not a heavy Overkill fan, but you want to see a good documentary. I might need strings help right here because I can't remember what it's called. But it's on, was it on Amazon Prime? Rat Skates did it. Um, and I can't remember the name of it. It's on <laughs> Amazon Prime. And just look up Rat Skates. Um, Have you seen that, Randy? It's pretty no. good. It's Anyone who has a VHS copy, because it was never released on DVD, I sold it like a <clears> dumbass, <throat> all on me. Overkill only put out one home video. <clears throat> it was in 92, I think. Video Scope, which was every video up to that point, which was for Horoscope. And I hear that thing goes for a heck of a chunk of change on eBay and Amazon. Never released on DVD. Never. Hmm. And that's on Atlantic Speaking Records. Speaking of chunk of change, not to get completely off the subject here, but String purchased some Dirty Look stuff. So I was like, man, when he... going to bring that so I could show it. When he told me, he, when he got five easy pieces. Got five easy pieces. For uh, what? And bootlegs. For dollar fifty a piece. I just looked up five easy pieces on Discogs today, and we're on the internet. Um, <laughs> I found it on Discogs. There was only one person in the United States that had a copy on there. Anyway, now eBay's probably got a shit pile of them, but on this website, one person. It was a sealed copy, and they wanted two hundred and fifty dollars for it. I believe it. And I told, I told, well, when he told me, he sent me pictures of them. I was like, you got some gems there. Yeah. Dirty look stuff because I guess since their lead singers did, that stuff's just not going to get released. It probably, it'll just go away and just, we'll, we'll just have to support it all we can. That's why we do this show too. I mean, to keep the music alive. That's, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Another thing for people out there, never ever ditch a pawn shop or a Goodwill. You never know. Most times out of 10, you'll go up and take a swing and you'll strike out. But there's going to be that one time you're going to hit one, at least get a base hit if you're lucky, oh, get a yeah. home run. Because uh, last week <clears throat> I went and I saw the first three Sacred Reich, uh, MOD. They're, you get it on YouTube, it's, it's split into songs. It's not a full block for the full album. 
anybody has any of that, hold on to it. I paid 34 cents for the cassette, and it plays like it did 25 years ago. Yeah. So you never know about the Goodwills. You never know about the money. If you, anybody out there still has a Salvation Army, you never know. Check the logo. You never know. Because I hit them every Thursday before I go and eat my guts out till I puke. You never know what you're going to find at a Goodwill or a pawn shop. You could be hit or a miss. Look at the rods. Hi, Jerry. Hey, <laughs> you're getting it back. I think, it, I think that was somebody's collection that we that we scarfed up at the Goodwill. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the swans fish. Well, well, we won't talk about that no more. No, sir. All right, so I'm going to go on my next one. Did you find that bottle? I didn't. I was found some other stuff. The, the Brad Skates is like a. He's into films and stuff now, so he, he actually did one called Get Thrash. It's about the thrash metal scene. Um, but I couldn't find it real. Just trying to hunt real quick. I yeah. didn't see the one. We might have to put that. Or if anybody <clears throat> knows, there's another another comment section question there. If you know what the Overkill video is, we're talking about The Brad Skates did it. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. If you got that, you can watch it free on there. Just. Search it up. I'm sure you can find it. Overkill Rat Skates. And there's a lot of there's a lot of good documentaries <clears throat> on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. Music documentaries. There's the Scorpions. I want to check out this guy. To, some pretty heavy stars. But um, all right. So I'm going to go with Skid Row self titled myself. There was something I was going to say about this album because String talked about it. Damn it! If I oh I know what I was going to say. We are creeping up. January 24th, 1989. So, you mm-hmm. know, we're coming up on 30 years. 30 for this bad boy. years. And I'm old. I read a thing the other day, and I might have to. I usually think Sebastian gets ranting and it's usually out of control, but he might have a point that, you know, if he's the issue, why have they had, what, three, four different lead singers? If Sebastian was the problem. It's, they phone number four, and they still... I saw that. You know, just... I mean, if my God, if Axel <laughs> Slash can share the stage, I'm sure that there's enough time yes. that Sebastian, y'all can just get it figured out. Bring out Rob, bring Rob Fuso back to you. I mean... The original Kiss did it, too. Yeah, I mean... And they hate each other. Yeah, Motley brought back Vince. You know, that was all money <clears throat> thing, too. But, um, anyway... Almost 30 years for this great album. Thank you, Michael. All right, that's my number, I guess number three. Number three. All right. We was talking about Zach Wilde earlier. One of my favorite albums. It's classic. No More Tears. Well, that's my, my favorite song. Mama, I'm favorite Coming song. Home. Road to Nowhere, Hellraiser. Lots of good stuff on here. Um... So let's see, this one was 1991, mastered, or uh, yeah, it was mastered by Michael Wagner and went platinum seven times, just like Kid Rock would say. I don't know, it's just, I love hearing No More Tears live, and Mama, I'm Coming Home live. Both Zach, when, only when Zach's playing him, because there he is. But anyway, I don't mind the other guys who play, but I really Both like solos it. Both solo is incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, <clears> incredible. And then here, like, however many people at the show all singing, Mama, I'm coming home. Yeah. Just, I don't know, I get cold chills every time I hear it live. Even if I'm not there, I see it on DVD. It's just awesome here. I love crowd <clears> anticipation. <throat> <clears throat> so anyway, that was my number three. Great album. Good one. Mine three is uh, Megadeth, So Far So Good, So What? Say what? Say what? <laughs> uh, I love this one. It really, people don't talk about this one. Liar. In My Darkest Hour. Hell, I live that song every day. <laughs> uh, one thing that's about, special about this time period within the band, for me, the height of the Cold War, not America versus Russia, but... Megadeth versus Metallica. And you had the magazines out. Hit Parader had the thing. Like a fight, wrestling or boxing, Heavy Metal Heroes presents this and this. You got a poster. You know, it's a flip over. It was Dave Mustaine on one side and Hetfield on the other. Of course, I put Dave up. Big surprise. Um, <laughs> and uh, I like that. 
You know, it wasn't really healthy for two bands to kill each other, but at the end, the fans won. Uh, but this was a good record and a good cover of a Sex Pistol song. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked the end of the lungs of hell, that old record playing, that rock and chant, Liar and uh, Mary Jane, which uh, actually had that T-shirt. <clears throat> this was a very good record. Don't hear a lot of people talking about it anymore, but uh, it's still one of my favorites. This was very... Very good. Kick-ass record. So far, so good. What? Coming in at number three. And it's a good album cover, by the way. Vic had a gun, so he was pretty pretty pissed about something. It is kind of weird that it, you know, it it does get overlooked. But it's... There it is. It's good. Yeah. I mean, you're right, Randy. Nobody really talks about it, but... You know what's special about this cover? You can't forget about it. I'll tell you a short story. I'll make it quick. But that cover reminds me of a certain girl who worked at Food Line. I used to come. Well, it wasn't at, April Rain, then. It wasn't April Rain. Somebody <laughs> better. Used to come to Timmerville Pool. And how I met her, Crystal Biller. She was wearing that shirt with that cover on it when we were in high school. And school let out at 3. And the pool would open in May early. And she came down. And that's how I first met her. She was wearing that shirt with that mascot. Eagles. Damn! What? That's good. I can't remember that. Eagles. It's cool. Yeah, but yeah, I well, remember she that. Did. Well, yeah, well, yeah, for worse. Yeah. She had a Guns N' Roses towel that day <clears throat> from James Way. <laughs> James Way, <laughs> golly, they're throwing back there. If I had a picture of James Way, I'd show it right now. <laughs> yeah, I jumped out of the cl- uh, sky that day, opening day, with ping pongs, ping pong balls. Wow. That's a true story. I got hit with Full one. on ping pong, ping pong balls. Assault from I never the sky. understood that. He, he, he landed on the roof. Perfectly, and he, he was throwing ping pong balls. So. You have to oh, watch on the his, roof. On the, yeah, oh, okay. he jumped from an airplane. Yeah, but he was on the roof when he was. Well, he was throwing them, but I yeah, they, blah, 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 Oh, I blah, mean, blah. I like to see how far them little bastards bounce. I know, but I tell you one thing, they bounce. <laughs> You're only going to hear that on the metal show. That was uh, you know, where else? That's the first one for me. Oh, that was crazy. Crazy shit like this only happens in Timberville. Oh, that's yeah. right, James Way, baby. <laughs> yeah, now it's a food line. All right, so. Going to my number two. He's going to the basement. Yep. <laughs> this, is, this is for you, Carl. He's going under lock and key. George Lynch at his finest. Don Dockin under lock and key. Man, what a great okay. album. It was released November 22nd, 1985. Probably about the time I got to know Carl. We probably had some class together. And did a little music talking. But um, it says one time platinum. I mean, this is one of the, one of my this is one of my earlier metal albums. In my dreams, great song. It's not love. I love that it's video. Not, it's not love at all. That's the video where they're playing on the back of that tractor. Back of the tractor and trailer. Yeah, and the that's, hunter. It's a good video. It's a shame that it's a shame that George and Don Don hate each other so much because man, they they made some great music. But um, I could probably talk about this album forever and ever and ever. But yeah, this is a strong album. It'd be my number two, Dawkins, under lock and key. There you go, Carl. I'm going to go with what Randy had. I don't know where you had it. Number four? Number three? Number four? Which one? Overkill. Overkill. There we go. That's right. The Mean Lean Green Machine. Hello from the gutter. Hello. Great album. Old school, Overkill. It's overkill. That's all you gotta say. Under the influence, 1988. It was mastered, and I don't know if it ever went platinum, but it doesn't matter. It still shreds. It's a it's platinum in my book. Double platinum. Mega Force Records. Great. Yeah, Hello you know, from the gutter. That's the only song. Um, brain fade. Brain fade. Shred. Shred. Never say never. What did he do? Did he mix that? He mastered it. Yes, mastered it. So anyway, number two. Okay, it's good. Mine it's, uh, under the influence. Number two. You'll like it. Matari crew too fast Mater for cool. love. Matari crew. I could the, not like a song live wire that made a cowbell sound so good. <laughs> <laughs> More than that, uh, Merry Go Round, uh, of course, Live Wire, and my favorite song on the album, On With the Show. This was a good, uh, hell of a record. 
Yeah, I haven't played it lately, but it, it, I, I still I listen to it then. I listen to it now. What a f- fantastic debut by this band that came out and just took over the world and kicked you right in the balls. Oh, yeah, it's classic. So, Monterey Crew coming in at number two with Too Fast for Louvre. For Louvre. He actually mixed that before Electra got a hold of it. He actually was <clears throat> doing the mixing before they really exploded. When they were selling stuff out of the boot of their car, was the stuff that Michael Wagner mixed. Now, Pretty Boy Floyd did one that did the, Toast of the Town yeah. on Electric Boys, Toys, or electric Boys, boys or electric, with Leather, yeah. leather, leather boys, boys with Electric, electric Toys, toys Making Noise Tonight. Yes. I remember. That was close. And what was weird about that was, for me, as a Mot- I mean, a huge Motley Crue fan, I'd heard the song Stick to Your Guns. I heard that off Metal Shop. But I never heard Toast of the Town, and I got that Pretty Boy Floyd, and you know that song was on there, Toast of the Town. But it's, see, they don't have no writing credits, so they don't say you know Nikki Six or whatever. But anyway, when I heard Toast of the Town, finally heard it on the remasters, I'm like, man, I've heard this song before, and it bugged me for like weeks on end until I finally figured out it was like you said, Pretty Boy Floyd. I never did know that that they had done a cover of a Motley Crue song because I'd never heard Toast of the Town till, you know, all these years later. But, yeah, I thought that was kind of neat. And you're right. I mean, Pretty Boy Floyd, did, they did a good job. They, they, did, they, good, they did a jet. cover of Kiss Shout It Out Loud <clears throat> later in the 90s on one of their independent release. I had it. Town of Campus had it. They're not, they weren't bad. They looked like a bunch of drag queens. But under looking at they did some good covers. Yeah. Nobody can not take that away from them. They did good. I liked it. If, yeah. Good. Well, if you like their, I mean, if you like Pretty Boy Floyd, their most recent album, which came out last year, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it. You can write in the comments. They're still around? And, yeah, they just put an album awesome. out. Awesome. I'll have to look into that. We saw them. What year did we see them? It has been years ago. We saw them at Jack's. Oh, yeah, that show was freaking incredible. It was, it was good. Did they play? Uh, they played M3 last year. Yeah, but did they play Toast of the Town? When we saw I at Jack, they played Toast of the Town. I know they played Wild Angels, which is probably yeah, one of my that's favorites. Like one of the bigger ones. But even when we went and seen them, that was one of them. What well, we just went to go, I think. It was like, well, we'll go check it out. I like I Want to Be With You. I like that. But man, when we got, me and String left that show, and I was like, holy crap, they were freak. There weren't a lot of people there. It was, I mean, it was a, what, maybe 100 people there? It wasn't very many. Because I remember we had was, good standing. <laughs> it was like, what ten bucks to get in or something? Yeah. It was crazy cheap, and it was they sounded fucking great. Yeah, I thought they were awesome. Yeah, and I think Kerry Kelly might have been playing with them, and I, now I think he plays with Night Ranger now, mm-hmm. and he was he was because didn't yeah because Kerry Kelly played at M three with both bands. He played yeah. Pretty Boy Floyd, and then he played with Night Ranger when we saw them. Not to be mixed up with um, Lover Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Night Ranger and Lover Boy. You had to be at the show to yeah. understand all that, but I had a, I got Lover Boy and Night Ranger all mixed up for like, I think pretty much the, the whole, whole night. weekend. <laughs> Maybe Both nights actually. Yeah. yeah. We or we just, I think he finally got it. Yeah. And I just a, had to give him a hell about it. It was left. So but fun. we did see Night Ranger last year. Yes. We saw Lover Boy the year before. Lover Boy was, like, was high. They were all right. But, but Night Ranger here. kicks ass. Well, you, you fan Night Ranger? I like Sister Christian, Seven Wishes, and Sentimental, Sentimental Street, yeah. in the Avenue. America. America. Midnight all... Madness. I had that when I worked at the record store. Yeah, I know. They sound great. Nothing guys. against that band. Did you know Kerry Kelly's playing with them? Mm-mm. Yeah, he's been no. playing guitar for a while. I know Mike liked them. Hardesty loved them. He loved them back in the day. Did Kerry ever play with Alice Cooper? Yeah, I think he did. I think we saw him, Fowles Cooper, the show we took Hayden to. Oh. I think he played that night. I think that was his last show. Oh. Maybe. I, I may mean, I might be, don't quite Damon that. played that time, too, didn't he? Yeah. <gasps> I, well, I know. Damon, he, I don't think Damon plays with him anymore. No, because Damon's he's with, with his red. He's with that Black Star. Yeah, Black Star Riders. I was going to say Red Dragon. And he's. I think he's got some solo stuff out, too. Gosh, he's incredible, too. Brother Kane. That was an awesome show. I was, I'd like to see Brother Kane just come back and do an album or something. They were great. Me and John Hellborn were talking about, he went to that show too, the one we went to. Went for who? Um, Brother Kane, the oh, one over Charlottesville. And then I got telling him about Wes. You know, he used Wes's beer bottle for, oh, yeah. for a slide. 
All right, so let's let's get on my number one. And I know, I don't know how many people are gonna love my number one, but man, that's a good album. I'm not, I'm not probably the hugest fan of them. I do like them, but man, I love this album. It's Warren's Dog Eat Dog. Very, very, very underrated album. Janie Lane. This song, this album, really shows how how good of a songwriter he is. And anybody that listens to a lot of stuff will say. This is probably their best album, I think. It was released August 25th, 1992. And it only went gold, which is surprising for them, but music was doing some weird stuff then. It was all going alternative. But um, that's my number one, Warren's Dog Eat Dog. <laughs> there we go. What do you think of, have you ever listened to Dog Eat Dog? I've never heard it. Really? Mm. Man, it's really good. Janie Lane's, I don't know, Strings a big fan of it either. I have it, or had it, I should still have it. And I remember listening to it and not caring for it, but it's been a long time since I listened to it. I just need to drag it back out and listen to it and just give it a, a good day. Some days you want to listen to that yeah. kind of stuff, some days you don't. So you just got to find one of those days when you're in the mood for that. Don't um, listen, yeah, don't listen to it like cherry pie warrant no 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 no. that's that a because, because you'll be disappointed if you're respecting cherry pie but if you're respecting complex songs like uncle tom's cabin i mean you're going to hear complex songs on that album but that's me not blind about that album all right so my number one metallica Got to throw it in there greg marks there you go there greg another show praising like, them Praise Greg. <laughs> you need to show up. We got an empty row of seats back here for you. Master of Puppets, 1986. Michael Wagner mastered this, and it is platinum five times, which I'm really shocked it's not more than that. But I bet it's diamond. It's I bet it's diamond. But well, it's I don't know how long ago this was. Off, yeah. The information we got was off of Michael Wagner's website. And it is a little bit outdated because it only went up through 2014 and then we did another search and found stuff all the way up through 2018. So, and obviously uh, he has, he's still alive. So yeah. he's been seen in Tennessee watching the Denman apparently. Yeah, he produced um, the Denman. So I'm sure this is, it would have to be more than platinum think. five times. I just... Sounds low, on it? I just don't understand how this was only five times and Skid Row was nine times. Yeah, so I got five times for Skid Row, so, so uh, I, don't know. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I made a mistake. Out. No, maybe I figured that nine sounds more logical because, man, Skid Row sold out a lot of albums. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, that was a killer album for them, too. So, anyway, I don't think I really need to preach about this one too much. It's already been preached about. This is pre black album, obviously, so nothing bad to say still writing good music and some of the best songwriting they did I think <clears throat> there you go there it is it there can't it be is. Bad. now I don't want to hear you bitch anymore <laughs> they finally made number one Master of Puppets number one without a doubt Battery has the greatest intro that I've ever heard in my life <laughs> with the acoustic and then this band comes on playing a million miles an hour my brother-in-law got me introduced to this and once I heard this album it changed my life forever and it still has to this day it's why every night taking care of my mom I'm on this thing looking for thrash metal bands uh, of today and they're out there fortunately a lot of them not in America the one I found the furthest is in Portuguese but as long as I can get my hands on I don't care this is the band that started me on the thrash revolution right here. I mean, and it was a big four for me. Once I heard this, I'm like, if these guys can do it, is there any more? And there was. Here come Among the Living. Thank you, Mike Hardesty. We borrowed that before you crashed the Volkswagen and you hit that tree. Remember that? I knew. <laughs> then it was, uh, what's, what's the other big four? It was uh, Megadeth, Peace Cells. I heard from Jeff Smith. We, he had the record, Columbia record tape. 12 cassettes for a penny, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Went over to his house, he got it. And then the the, uh, the cream of the crop, 
Slayer, Rain and Blood, both it on my 16th birthday. But this right here, if it wasn't for this, the style of thrash metal that I enjoy to this day would not exist. This is the record that paved the way. And you See, I'm actually going to be nice to them and not going to say anything. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it down gentle, like a laxative. Okay? <laughs> Master Puppets, top notch, and it's by far the best record they ever done. So the number one, Greg... See how calm I am? Just for you. <laughs> I love you, bitch. <laughs> okay, see? <laughs> Gosh, two number ones there. Two number ones. Back to back two number ones. ones. Yeah. They would have probably been number one for me, but I just <clears throat> did I just went the the Michael Wagner doing the whole production thing route. And that was why I wasn't in there <clears throat> and you know I know Motley Crue should have been mentioned too, but that was why they didn't make it. But speaking of Motley Crue, we found this out today. Let's talk about Motley Crue. Or just I, one I, past member of Motley Crue. 94. Just come out. I don't have a release date. I think it was last year. You didn't come prepared. Not for this because this was this was should, a... I should say 2018. This is That's Spur of the Moment. 2017. Spur of the Moment. This is an impulse ad. But... um. We talked about this album, Motley Crue's 94 with John Karabi. Yeah, well, Karabi. there's so much demand for this album that John decided he would release a live album. And I, technically his son plays drums for the band. He's a little kid. I don't know if anybody remembers The Scream, a band called The Scream, but they had a song called Man the Moon. They had a little boy pushing a lawnmower. Well, on here... He tells that that little boy was his son hmm. that was pushing Lumber on Man on the Moon. So if you go back and watch Man on the Moon if you, you want to see it. Gee, John Crabby on there. Go ahead and son. stop this. You can come back to it later. Hurry up and go watch it so you don't forget it. The scream. Then you can come back and then re finish watching. So when, well, I don't know. It's like I never paid attention to producers and all that stuff. I mean, I did a little bit. But man, I've really, if you want to really dig in and feel and get more of the album and see who does this and does that, and you'll understand why this album sounds this way or this sounds this way. And I figured Michael Wagner, Jace Klein said something about um, Rick Rubin. You know, we know he's produced a pile of stuff too. And then we talking about <laughs> View a Hill and Ted Templeton did, you know, Bob Van Rock, Allen and Rock. the Bullet Boys. Yeah, Bob what Rock. Bob Rock did? <laughs> he got he, me calm now. He, de <laughs> he destroyed is what he done. Of course, I don't know, man. He he did not feel good too. You know, I should know this. I forgot the guy Ezrin. Don't forget about Bob Ezrin. He produced Destroyer. Yeah, but it was really cool for me. Destroyer, original band, The Real Kiss, and he produced the greatest non makeup album, Revenge. So, but he also produced The Elder. So. Mm. You know, but Bob, don't forget about Bob Ezra. He redeemed himself with that. He, he redeemed himself with when, that. So, and then you have people like you know Mustaine that does all the production. Yeah. You know, he's just they're that good. And you know, like Don Dawkins, he's I think he does a lot. Paul of and stuff. Gene produced their own there towards the end. That's they they did of, Asylum. There's a lot of bands nowadays that even bands that didn't before are now doing their own stuff as they've gotten older and paid attention to what they were doing in the studios and gotten good at it and trying it on the road. But you know, it's like, it's like, um, he was even saying, Michael Wagner about, um, you know, how important it is. Production is a big part of it, mm -hmm. guys. It's just, I know the musicians make all the music, but if you don't have the guys behind the scenes, you gotta have the guy in the chair, yeah. brother. It, making it sound If you don't good. have a good sound, I mean, you could be a tight ass band and sound great live, but if it don't come across on that disc. I got one. Who did Hysteria? Who did uh, that? Mutt Lang. Mutt Lang. That, for the time being, that was one of the most produced yeah. albums I ever heard. He's done a shit. That's just a too. crisp, clear, just, my God, that's a good one. Yeah, he done three great. Um, I don't know if he done, um, I don't know, Spike will know. I don't know if he done Adrenalize or Spike. not. But I know he done Hydra. Pyromania. And Pyromania and Hysteria. And it, but Phil Collins doing stuff now, and I think he's shooting stuff. He if he's learned anything from Butt Lang, I'm really excited about the sound on the new Tesla. Even though Cartman will be singing, but we could probably get rid of the Cartman in the studio. I'm hoping. 
So yeah, I'm pretty psyched. I'm pretty. I am pretty excited this year for two albums. I'm excited for the new Tesla, and I'm excited for Tora Tora. Overkill. Overkill. Got one coming out uh, February the 24th. Supposedly Megadeth singles dropping next week, so that means we'll have something new. Exodus finally, with Slayer being mm-hmm. going down. I guess Gary will have time to focus on that. So they've got something new. So that's what I'm looking forward to. For now. All right, guys. I guess we'll wrap this up. Like I said, if you got your CD out, flip it over. See who produced it. Yep. You, you might be surprised. There's probably a good chance because there's like yeah, pages of stuff we printed off. Yeah, I was just amazed. Like, oh, wow. Damn, he did that too. Wow. Yeah. He did this one too. So I guarantee you, if you're into hard rock and heavy metal and you've been around since mid-'80s at least, or at – Anywhere before, actually, because he started, uh, this one's the 79, so if anywhere from there till current, damn good chance he's got his hands on it. Oh, and I go make one more mention. Um, Jason Klein sent me a message today. He posted on my wall, my Facebook, Hops Metal Show, Bon Scott singing doo-wop. <laughs> And I, I, I even went and checked it out. I forgot about it, actually. Jason said, did you go check out the Bon Scott thing? I went and listened to it at work. And everybody out there needs to go check that out. I don't I don't remember what it is right offhand. But uh, maybe Jason Klein could put it down in the comments and maybe put a link to it. But everybody needs to check that out because we, we're fortunate that ACDC decided to come around. Because I don't know if we would want a Bon Scott doing do wop his whole career. You want to hear something yeah. else funny? Look up Ozzy Osbourne singing Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Mm. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good, too. Mm. All right. Hops, hard rock, forward slash, heavy metal page. Yep. On Facebook. You need to link that shit in the, I down need, there. Yeah, I need to figure need out to how to do that. that. Yeah, get down there and... Swish it around yeah. and get it done. And get it, yeah. And the usual speech, subscribe, like, guests, welcome. Ideas, welcome. Comment section, welcome. I guess we're out of here, fellas. Let's rock. Peace.